Namaste, I was Dari. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So today we're moving to the South Africa. Yeah, Msansi oh, Msansi people. What's going on? <laughs> this illegal mining. <laughs> oh my God, South Africans. Um, what have you done to deserve all of this? Unbelievable. I cannot believe the level of crimes the immigrants are committing in South Africa. This level of crime that you guys are tolerating, I just just cannot, yeah, don't believe it. It is just unbelievable. So what's happening here, if you haven't heard, is that illegal mining in South Africa, it's a big business for criminals, illegal mining for illegal migrants thing is, if people come to the country and they're illegal, especially in South Africa, which where high unemployment is so high, around 33% unemployment, and you have this influx of a lot of low-skilled people who are coming to a country under the pretense of they are asylum or refugees, and then the refugee claims and assess or takes long time because there's a lot of influx of them. So the resources of actually looking after uh, their claims is actually limited. So they then, because South Africa doesn't have refugee camps, doesn't have that, they went on these, uh, you know, stuff that are so borderless and is dangerous in my view. Um, I think they need to have a look at this um, thing of how they manage refugees and asylum because if you don't, they don't have, they don't really streamline this process, you're going to get this problem of a lot of people who are illegal in the country that their claims aren't really, cannot be assessed because they came in and rock up in the country and how to survive, they would then have to find a way to survive. How they would survive is to most of them commit these crimes. And one of them is this illegal mining. Illegal mining, it's a lot of mines that have been abandoned in South Africa uh, by companies and these mines aren't secured. And you have these people coming from neighboring countries um, looking for uh, their platinum, their gold in South Africa and entering this abandoned mining shaft. So lately, so the government has been on this path in South Africa to try and reduce these illegal mining activities. So what they've done is that they had a joint operation between a police and South African Defence Force to try and work on this crime to reduce this illegal mining. This illegal mining, it is really a very sophisticated criminal entity. Okay, why I'm saying it's so sophisticated and it's a criminal entity is because these people, they even have food supplier people supplying them with food so that they can remain under, under the ground and look for this platinum. They are called Zama Zamas and they're given names called Zama Zamas. That's a Zulu name. So the government suddenly, yeah, just before the last election, because they knew they're gonna, you know, not gonna have good uh, result um, because they failed, and they started this operation since then. But now they, these uh, mining,s a lot of them are in the northwest province. Um, so far, thousands of them have emerged. You know how they got these thousands of them to emerge? Is that they've cut the food supplier, so they've 
allow them to stay without food. So it is a sophisticated criminal activity. So people are supplying them with food. So they realize these people are supplying with supply of food. That's why this thing continues. They cut the suppliers of food and they stay there 24 hours monitoring these entry to these mines. Because these people now, for three months now, haven't got any food. So they've surfaced. Yep. See? Yeah. Thousands of them. So obviously these ones are illegal miners. So they came out, there were over thousands of these ones that came out. Now we know that about 4,500 of them that are still trapped. These are illegal miners. Illegal miners, they shouldn't have gone there. They were doing illegal activities and they are illegal miners. This video, they, here is all of these thousand illegal miners. Only four of these uh, were South Africans. All of them are illegal in South Africa, got they illegal, and then committed these illegal activities of mining. There's, that is all of them there. So thousands surfaced about a month ago, and they were all obviously dehydrated and were helped in hospital and then some of them were put into um, prisons because they were illegal migrants. They were out of those thousand, only five were South Africans. All of them, thousand minus five, 995 were illegal migrants. So now they're talking about this because uh, after those thousand that came out, um, they were made aware that they, there are 4,500 illegal migrants in those mines in there. Now the conversation now in South Africa is around, well, should the government really help them now and send them food and send their soldiers and um, the police officer to go and rescue them because now because their food supply is not they're not getting any food because the police and the south african defense force have actually cut their food supply so it is really cruel that the government is doing this to these criminals they should really supply the food and the people who are saying that is the media the elites media Okay, they're saying that and the citizen themselves, like me and everyone else, expert, you know, I live in Australia. Uh, I said, no, I feel the same as the other one that, you know, the, these people, they know how to get out of those shafts. They need to get out. But they're not, they don't want to get out because they don't want to be arrested. They're illegal in the country in the first place. So they stayed there. So who is, this is an ethical issue. Who is at fault here for you? The question is, who is at fault? What do you think? Do you think uh, the government has a responsibility to send soldiers and police officers in these abandoned mine shafts that likely very much at risk not maintained you can have a methane gas explosion inside your brightest and the greatest police officers and soldiers will 
possibility of them dying with this rescue of these illegal mining miners do you think <laughs> the government should do this and send police officer to rescue these illegal migrants down there at the bottom in abandoned mining shaft that hasn't been maintained for years that people got in there illegally to try and find platinum and gold so let's listen into this video and hear what this um news presenter is going to say and i'll just uh, play another one video from the minister as well so let's listen in guys now there were about 50 people from the community who had volunteered and signed the indemnity forms to say that we are going to help you to remove all the people who remain underground because they cannot resurface by themselves due to lack of strength uh, because of hunger and uh, starvation and dehydration as they were prevented to food for months we understand through operation volume Koti, which is a joint operation between the south african police service and the army and but then a issue that has really sparked a lot of debate as we had uh, various people uh, including government officials um, you know commenting on what is prevailing here asking a lot of questions as to what exactly is happening um, at, the, at the at the same time as we are monitoring the situation on the ground we are asking ourselves the snail pace uh, in which this particular operation is going will they definitely remove all the people underground as expected because you would recall that it's only about five people that have resurfaced at this point and they have now been detained and been questioned by the south african police service and we know and understand that they are definitely going to face the courts before some of them as we understand that they are foreign nationals being uh, deported to their countries of origin we are seeing currently members of um, various units from the south african police service which include the public order tactical response team air wing uh, illicit mining and mounted units are also part of this we also saw the department of health being part of the operation after deploying a number of their emergency services vehicles and also the pathology services was also here something which really brought uncertainty to community members who continue to camp nearby the shaft each and every day since the operation resumed on tuesday morning and we understand that there are people who have already lost their lives at this point, Braden. And the community members are saying that, um, you know, they are pleading to government authorities to assist in fast tracking to remove, um, you know, the pro to fast track the process of removing those who are underground. We often see some of them carrying white candles. Oh, as you have heard there, no, they want, yeah people to go and assist because some of them have died in there and let's listen in to the minister talk about this issue as well so here's the minister and let's hear what she's talking about because here people know the media is trying to get um her to comment and to blame her uh, so she can do something and then allow the and, and put police officers and army in at risk by sending them down there to rescue these people who shouldn't be there. So let's hear what she's saying about this and we'll talk. We're not sending help to criminals. They're, we're going to smoke them out. They will come out. We're not sending help to criminals. Criminals are not to be helped. Criminals are to be persecuted. We didn't send them there. And they didn't go down there for the good benefit or good intentions for the Republic. So we can't help them. Those who want to help them, they must go and take the food down there. They will come out. We'll arrest them. We're not sending help to criminals. Yep. So she's saying that 
those people who are feeling that are sorry for them want to help them they can go and, and rescue them yeah that's probably true i would say but we shouldn't be sending your police officer that you've trained for years to go and rescue criminals who shouldn't be there in the first place they resurfaced thousands of them so resurfaced the others they stayed there because they knew that they would be arrested and be deported back to their countries so they made a decision to stay there and die if they've de already died in those underground there because the food supply has been cut off um that they would stay there but others came off so it is now there is that ethical issues that has been raised around uh you know the constitution says that everyone has the right to life including criminals which is true they have a right to life but nobody has killed them they killed themselves because they had a choice they had no food supply they need to make a journey out but they knew if they made a journey out they would be arrested so they made a decision to stay underground so we shouldn't be sending people who are highly trained to risk themselves under the ground where they would be, anything can happen. It can be a blowout of methane gas, you know. So people who are feeling that they, something should be done, they're very much welcome to put on the boots, go under and be the rescuer. That's true, just go. If you feel like they need to be rescued, please, do the favor. They they will, will they should support you and give you all the gear just to go there and support them. But I'm not going to send the police or the army for these people. So because they my issue is that they had a choice. Nobody's killing them intentionally. They have a right for life. South Africa is everyone has a right to life, including criminals. We all agree of that. There's no doubt. But they had a choice. Once the food supply was cut off, they had a choice, stay underground illegally or make the journey out, just like the other one you saw. But they chose to remain. So who to blame? Who are you going to blame now? Of course, the media is blaming the government now. I mean, it's one of the reasons why you saw the result in America. It is just people so elite and so far removed from people who are suffering from this level of crimes that these illegal migrants commit in their country, in their neighborhood. Because they are far in the leafy green suburb, high walls, 24-hour security. But those everyday people, they're the ones that suffer. So you need to... Um, really really look at your privileges why you're saying the things you're saying is that because you are comfortable where you are you're wealthy and therefore you you think about certain things and then you don't really relate with people who are victim of these criminals and therefore because they're victim and they've seen in their community their friends and neighbors they have a different view and I happen to agree with a few. So people put themselves at harm's way. They didn't go there to, as the minister said, they didn't go to, to help South Africa to be good migrants into the country, to contribute positively to the country. They came there to destroy South Africa. They used South Africa as a transit. It is time that these people like that that they send back to where they came from. You don't want people who are coming to your country, use your country as a transit. They don't contribute positively in your country. They don't engage with your country. They don't participate in the country's activities to integrate within the culture of the country. They form this group and these camps. By using South Africa as a transit, as a hotel, and they use it to exploit. So there's nothing benefit for South Africa to have these people there. That is my opinion. 
but you're not gaining anything whatsoever. Okay, so comment below about you. So this is actually ethical issues. Well, just think about it. Like I said, choices. People make choice. If people decide to make certain choices, we can't blame us. If you decide to go there and you, you die, you perish, you can't blame the government for not risking their lives, for not risking the brightest and highly trained police officers and army to go and rescue you because you, as a criminal, the criminal put themselves there. Uh, yeah, it's the same like, kind of story like America where it's a huge in, um, number of um, migrants and what the Democrats did was then, you know, give them, put them into hotels, give them credit card, do all sorts while Americans are homeless. You know, I don't blame Americans f to vote the way they voted. I knew this was going to happen, that they will vote for Donald Trump because you could see how things were happening on the ground that were pushing people who are centered to far right, very far. You can push people to your policy as a government. You can push them to set in, to move far from the center. Certain policies, the behavior that government is, can push people to somewhere. Even with this mad bill, I tell you, this mad bill is going to push people who are center to far right. Okay? It is that close. If this bill goes true, it's going to push center to go right. And it's going to be another nightmare in the next election for this government because it's just moving away from that good old common sense Australia way of life and it's moving and pushing things to the extreme and yeah so that's what I'm saying giving you an example of what's happening in my home country South Africa obviously I live in Australia I'm a South African Australian and I just give you the Mzansi side of my diary what's going on so all of these things are uniquely similar. South Africa is more similar to what's going on in America. Not so much what's similar is happening in Australia. There's certain things that are similar, but certain things are quite different. And that, that is to do because South Africa is a republic. Australia is not a republic. So even yeah, how things are run in South Africa is quite different. In South Africa, we have province. Here we have the state. Uh, so that's the province and states the same. This province here, which is equivalent to states, like if I say South Australia, it is, yeah, it's Northwest province where these mines are located. So platinum, gold mine. See, South Africa is the biggest producer of platinum in the world, the fourth producer of platinum. So some of the mines have been closed. Those closed mine, illegal Migrants have found a way to make money by entering them. Obviously, there's still some South Africans in there. They'll be that small, but overwhelmingly about 95% of these illegal mi miners are illegal migrants from neighboring countries. Just, yeah. Comment below. What do you think? Would you risk your life? Get in there in an abandoned mine shaft that's not been maintained for years. Um, it could be meat and gas blowing up on you. Say goodbye to your family to go and rescue these people who had who had made decision that they didn't have food. Obviously, they're going to be hungry. They should make their way out. They made a decision to stay, not to come out. Remember, they made the decision not to come out. The mines, nothing is wrong with the mines. They're still intact. Some of them, you saw some of them came out. But those who were there, 4,500 of them in there, they made the decision to not come out. So would you 
risk your life. Put on the boots, all top gear, to go under unmaintained mine that has methane everywhere that could blow up and kill you to rescue people who had a choice to come out. And they're still there to today because they don't, don't have food supply. There's no water, there's no food. So people are now putting the so-called human right issue about, oh, you should just give them food. Nobody's not, no, the government's not saying they're not giving them food. The food is there, but they just need to come up and get the food. They were sent to hospital because dehydrated and put a drape on, but they'll go to prison. But they don't want to come. They've made a decision to stay there. So is the question is, would you go out there and rescue them? I know I wouldn't do it. But, you know, these elites people say they, they would do it. So please go. Show us. We just film it and see you go under. I mean, all these media that go and say these things, uh, I would like for them not to talk and say, show us. You know, go to them, the police, ask them to give you all the safety gear. Go under, help them. Go and rescue them. You know? Talk is cheap, you know? See, show us your humanity. You say the police are inhumane, the government is inhumane because they've let, they're not, um, <laughs> they've cut off the, the food and water supply of these illegal miners that realized they didn't have food. So, Thousands of them emerged because they were smart one that thought, oh, shit, we don't have food, don't have water, better get out. But the other 4,500 is still there. So do you want to go and rescue your brothers, your brothers? If you want to rescue them, yeah, the government is saying it's okay, you can get in, go and rescue them. Okay, stop talking, get in, but they're not going to send their brothers in there, which is great. It's good to hear that. Not going to send your police officers, cost a lot of money to train a police officer, cost a lot of money to train an army, all of those great people, so they want to risk their lives. So if your citizen think it's human right, yari, yari, and yeah, go under. So, yeah, yeah, this is Nzanzi Oz Diary, guys. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Until next time, see ya.